Why manners at 30,000 feet have flown out the window. Columnist Elizabeth Renzetti joins us to talk about airplane etiquette, plus how to pack for flight using only carry-on luggage. I'm Madeline White. Welcome to Globe Now. There was a time when flying had an air of civility, but it seems that image has been shattered by recent publicized episodes of improper behavior by passengers. You've probably read about these moments. Fights over reclining seats, stinky feet out on display, and belligerently drunk passengers. This kind of behavior has become so commonplace that there is even a Facebook page dedicated to passenger shaming, and it has over 200,000 likes. Elizabeth Renzetti has tackled this question before and is back today to help shed some light on this unsavory phenomenon. Welcome, Liz. Hello. So what do you think is behind this kind of indecent behavior that we see happening on flights? I think you have a competing set of interests here over uh, limited resources, essentially. So airlines um, understandably want to maximize profits. They're not Marxist collectives. I can see why they want to do this. So they're making, um, they're putting, trying to put more seats on, on flights and the seats that are on flights on some airlines are becoming smaller. On the other hand, you have passengers who fly more and increasingly know a lot more about airplanes and want uh, the cheapest and the best service. So all of those things come into conflict with each other. Hmm, but do you think, though, that there's an element of this that's just being amplified by social media? I guess what I'm saying is perhaps this kind of rude behavior has always existed and now we just have a megaphone to project it out there. Yeah, with. I'm a little tired, frankly, of uh, Dear American Airlines, you lost my bag today uh, in Twitter. And I also love on social media the fact that um, uh, there's a lot of finger pointing going on. So nobody ever actually goes on social media and says, I apologize, I was such a jerk today on the plane. I won't do it again. You know, mm -hmm. there's just a lot of finger pointing going mm -hmm. on. Well, and I mean, flight shaming, passenger shaming, we see that all of the time. What do you think about this online trend? I am a big fan of shame as a way of reinforcing social standards, Fair I have enough. to say. Fair enough. If you are going to take off your smelly socks or your shirt on my flight, I would like somebody to take a picture and post it so that everybody can see that, you know, perhaps, or if you let your children run riot or get way too drunk and make a pass at somebody, I think that that behavior. Um, should be known. It's like enforcing social conventions a little bit. Well, exactly. If people have lost uh, a sense of self-restraint, I mean, then it's upon the community to enforce a set of civilized standards. Hmm. So your piece that you wrote a little while back got hundreds of comments. We've picked out a few for you to respond to. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one writes, uh, they're actually suggesting a solution here to make one side of the plane reclining and charge extra for it like everything else. Do you think this is a good idea? Well, I was thinking about it. It'd be like kind of like a 90-sided Rubik's Cube or something because you'd have to have exactly the same number of recliners and the same number of non-recliners. I'm not sure it would work. It'd be like you need to also, you know, maybe uh, one side for people who drink, one side for teetotalers, one side for children, one side for no children. I'm not sure it's going to work that way. Airlines, as it is, are you know struggling to get everybody on the planes. God forbid it lead to some sort of other form of segregation. <laughs> um, now, another comment we got was um, questioning whether it's really the passengers are the people to blame. They write, Liz, don't you think it's more a matter of airlines having lost all sense of how to behave towards their customers? Is that a big part of the problem? Well, I think we've lost sight of the fact that, in my opinion, airlines have two jobs to do. One is to fly you safely, and the other is to fly you efficiently and on time. And we want them kind of to be both very cheap and luxury cruises at the same time, but they're not. They're not hotels, they're not restaurants, they're not the QE2. Their job is to fly you safely and on time, and I think if they do both those things, then I'm quite happy. I also I have to say I do miss the days of Ward Air. I remember Ward Air and their China plates, and it does make me sad. But at the same time, I think um, maybe our expectations are a bit high. Hmm. Interesting. Thank you so much for joining me, Liz. You're welcome. Well, we want to hear from you. Do you have a flying nightmare you want to share with us? Tweet it at us. Our handle is at Globe Now. Now, pesky passengers aren't the only annoying thing about flying lately. A number of Canadian airliners have begun to charge $25 for checked baggage on domestic flights. But not to worry. Our travel editor, Dominique Clark, shows you it is possible to pack all of your essentials into carry-on luggage. Attention flyers, the days of free checked bags are ending. Large airlines such as WestJet and Air Canada now charge $25 for the first checked bag on domestic flights for passengers traveling with low fare tickets. But don't fret, there are ways around these new fees. One way is to travel with carry-on luggage only. It may sound challenging, but it is quite doable with these tips. Number one, knowledge is power. Always check the size 
and weight limits of the airline. They are not the same. American Airlines limits carry-on luggage to 22 inches tall by 14 inches wide by 9 inches deep. Air Canada's are 9 by 15 and a half by 21 and a half. Consider the type of bag itself. If you really need to cram a lot in, you might be better off with a duffel bag or backpack. Wheels and handles take up room on standard suitcases. Number two, tough love. Be ruthless. If you think you might use it, toss it. Pack clothing items with multiple uses and use jewelry and accessories to dress up casual clothes. Number three, grooming. Ladies, look for beauty products that do double duty, such as foundation with SPF, and look for travel size versions of your favorite products. If you can't find one, just decant your own. Even better, look for a variety of wipes that won't count toward your liquids limit. Number four, strategy. Be smart about how you pack. Put shoes on the edges of the suitcase and wear your bulkiest pair while flying. Roll your clothes instead of folding, stuff smaller items into shoes, and look for lighter weight fabrics such as merino wool that still keep you warm without the bulk. Wear your jacket, don't pack it. Number five, entertainment. Ditch the books and magazines in favor of an e-reader or tablet. This also helps avoid those impulse purchases at the airport. That's it for today's show. Remember, you can find us on Twitter. We're at Globe Now. I'm Madeline White. Thanks for watching.